Looking at President Obama's chances of making his gun control plan a reality, we'll be joined by Dr David Smith now, who's a lecturer in American politics with the United States Study Centre. He joins us now in the studio. David Smith, thanks very much for coming in. Just going back to the 90s, when Bill Clinton got the assault rifle ban through, what was the secret to beating the gun lobby then? Well, Democrats weren't as terrified of the gun lobby then as they are now. It was after the 1994 election in which the NRA played a huge role in the Democrats' massive defeat in that election, and after the 2000 election when Al Gore uh, reauthorising the assault weapons bill as the casting vote in the Senate probably cost him the presidency in 2000, the Democrats became completely terrified of this as an issue. I mean, gun control was the issue that flipped Virginia from being a reliably Democratic state into a reliably Republican one. So Democrats in any area that is kind of conservative became really afraid of putting any gun control measure on the table. And that, I would say, is why the Obama administration was completely silent on the issue of gun control after the five previous mass shootings that took place in the US that year. Well, let's, let's look at another example aside from Virginia. The Democrats in Colorado, which has been described as ground zero on this mm. issue, uh, it's a Democrat state. There have been two of the most notable massacres there in recent years. And yet the Democrats there say the idea of limiting magazine size even is completely not a goer. So if that's, that's right. what the Democrats are saying, what hope more broadly? Not very good for the magazine ban and the assault weapon ban. Uh, because not only are Democrats in the Mountain West and in the South under this huge pressure, but every single Republican, any Republican who might want to cooperate on this will face a primary challenge in two years' time if they're a member of the House, backed by the NRA and facing somebody who's got a, a clean, orthodox record on gun rights. And the fact is that now... The vast majority of Republicans represent districts that are solidly Republican, so they don't have to worry about an electoral backlash from the left. They don't have to worry about uh, getting voted out and replaced with a Democrat. All they need to worry about is the primary. And the NRA has shown that it's a very powerful force in Republican primaries. It publishes report cards for every single legislator, both at the federal and the state level, saying uh, how well they perform on Second Amendment rights. And so Republicans are going to have absolutely no political incentive to cooperate with Obama on this issue whatsoever. Let's look at where he might succeed then. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, much of this plan revolves around background checks, in particular yes. working in the area of mental health. What other sort of backdoor ways of approaching the gun debate is uh, Barack Obama likely to succeed on? Well, the background check is the one that's most likely to succeed. That's got the support of about 88 per cent of Americans. And I think many Americans have just given up on the idea of actually stopping the proliferation of guns. But there has been this big conversation that's taken place after Sandy Hook and after the Aurora massacre about not letting guns fall into the hands of the wrong people. And so this is the kind of measure that possibly even the NRA might actually allow Republicans to support as a way of staving off the more serious measures around actually uh, preventing the sale of semi-automatic weapons. However, this also has serious practical difficulties because something like 40% of guns are actually sold on the secondary market where there's no capacity to run a background check. So this would basically mean having to change the structure of the gun market so that even second-hand gun sales would actually have to take place through some kind of agency that can run a federal background check. But nonetheless, this is the measure that stands the best chance of getting through both the Senate and the House. If all gun sales was... Sorry, oh. Sally Ann, go ahead. I was just going to say, isn't it a, a fact that uh, so many of the people who've uh, committed the uh, atrocities by guns were perfectly, were appeared to be perfectly normal people? And how you did those, could do those background checks, um, it's, you know, it's not always a possibility. That's, all, that's absolutely correct. And I would add to that that if you want to look at a model of a completely law-abiding, gun-owning citizen who never mm. did anything wrong, have a look at Adam Lanza's mother, who was Adam Lanza's first victim 
after he took mm. guns from her extensive cash, guns that she had taught him how to use. He killed her first and then he went and killed those children. Mm. In the 1990s, there was a string of mass shootings carried out by school children using guns that they had stolen from their parents or their uncles' arsenals. The NRA always talks about not wanting to infringe on the rights of law-abiding citizens. But the fact is that arsenals of semi-automatic weapons are public safety problems. And often it's not these law-abiding gun owners who are going to use them in these bad ways, but the fact that these caches of guns exist for people to raid, these create the conditions that allow mass shootings to happen. So can I say, it's very hard for Australians to get their, come to grips with what the status quo is in the United States. When you talk about here that they're going to propose banning the possession of armour-piercing bullets, I mm. mean, it's something quite remarkable. Yes. And also when you see two of the country's top military commanders in recent years, Stanley mm. McChrystal and Colin Powell, both coming forward and saying they've carried... Uh, M16s, they've seen what an M16 round can do to people at, at fired at that speed and at that rate. Mm. They see no necessity for those guns to be in the hands of civilians and yet they've been under fire from mm. many directions. So the debate is framed so differently from here. Do you think that it isn't just the lobby, that there is something just embedded in the American psyche that we'll stop it, this it just, going through? I have to say it just sounds hopeless, doesn't it? You well, know, when you listen to all, all of that. I think that the gun culture, I mean, it's always been there in American culture and there's always been an ethos of self-defence, there's always been a very strong hunting culture, but I actually think that this aspect of people with huge caches of military-style weapons uh, buying body armour, buying armour-piercing bullets, that's actually a relatively recent thing. That's something that's been seen far more since about the 70s and the 80s, this whole kind of paramilitary culture that has really been encouraged by the NRA's fostering of paranoia by the NRA saying after any attempt at introducing gun control, well, the government is coming to take away your guns and that will set the stage for a broader, massive state tyranny. I mean, there's never going to be, for example, a national gun registry in the United States because there would be so much paranoia about now the government has a list of everyone who's got guns and they'll come in the middle of the night. I mean, this paramilitary culture is directly related to paranoia about gun control and that I do believe that the responsibility for that rests with the gun industry and West, with the NRA which is no longer just a marksman association or a sportsman association it is a lobbying group for the arms industry in the United States and I think it's it's not some permanent historical culture it's actually a relatively recent thing that they bear responsibility for. David on that point it, do you think there's a disconnect between the NRA and their membership? And, and the reason I ask is I've seen yeah. some polling recently that said something like 70% of NRA members actually supported background checks, but as you've said, the NRA yes. is fighting it tooth and nail. Absolutely, yeah. there yeah. is. I mean, the, the NRA, it did used to be a membership-driven organisation. There was a right-wing coup within it in the late 1970s. Increasingly, a lot of its donations actually come from the firearms industry. And when you look at some of the lobbying it does, such as preventing legal liability for gun manufacturers and even lobbying against gun control legislation overseas, you can wow. see where their real interests lie. It is with the arms manufacturers. They don't particularly have uh, the interests of their members at heart, although they often do a pretty good job of, uh, of selling members on their propaganda. But, yeah, there is a disconnect between the political lobbying wing of the NRA and its members, and its members do mm. consistently support background checks along with the rest of the population. And maybe not a majority, but a sizable minority of NRA members would actually support bans on weapons which are really only designed to inflict battlefield casualties, which are not traditional hunting weapons, and which are particularly that. good weapons for self We're not going to hear that from the top of the NRA. And no. as you say, 300 million <laughs> weapons already out there and plenty more to be sold, it yes. would seem. David Smith, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. At the US Studies Centre.